so hello and welcome to the first class for solving tournament problems without wasting any time let's get started so here we have a sample problem which says like this that there are eight teams a b c d e f g h who participated in a soccer tournament and the rules of the tournament were as follows pretty simple rules which are like that each team played each other exactly once in league stage let's try to understand this rule each team played each other exactly once in league stage so say if we are talking about team a it played against all other teams that is b c d e f g and h exactly once and similarly for b it played against all other teams like a c d e f g h exactly once so this implies that a team played seven matches it's seven matches per team because a is playing one against b one against c one against d one against d one against f one against g one against h that makes it seven matches for a so in seven matches per team next they are saying is the top four teams in terms of wins in the league stage make it to the next round so if a team if every team is playing seven matches it would have won certain number of matches and lost certain number of matches so the teams with maximum number of wins the top four teams they qualify to the next round but then mark one thing which i have said that this is a strange sample problem why what makes it strange is something like this that with these rules it is possible for a team to end up in top 4 even with two wins out of seven on the other hand it is possible for a team to not end up in top 4 even with five wins out of seven now this is what makes tournament problems particularly exciting because a team for a team two wins might be enough to qualify for the next round or make it to the semi-finals whatever you consider on the other hand even five wins might not be enough for a team to make it to the next round so let's try to understand this peculiarity by taking a smaller problem which goes like this that there are four teams a b c and d in a league format and top two qualify in the next round let's see what are the extreme possibilities out here let's say a wins its matches against b c and d that is a wins all its matches so i would say a played three won three lost zero and let's uh, say there are one point per match let's say one point per match if you win and zero if you lose so this is an extra rule i am introducing here so as a result it has got three points because three wins now let's come against b now b we since a has already won its match against b so b has to lose to a let's say b also lost to d while b won against c so that would mean b also played three matches won one lost two hence it has only one point let's look at c now we know that c lost to d sorry c lost to b and also c lost to a so that's what i'm saying loses to a and b but say c wins against d wins its match against d so in that case c will also end up with having just one victory and two losses as a result one point on the other hand when we come to d we have seen that it has lost to a because a won against d then it has won against b because uh, b has lost to d as i say b loses to a and d it has lost to c also so d has won against b but lost against a and c d loses to a and c and wins against b that's what the statement says so same happens for d as well three played one one lost two as a result only one point 
Now just to ch verify that the table is all right, let's count the number of wins and losses because number of wins should be equal to number of losses. So number of wins is 3 plus 1 plus 1, 6. Number of losses is also 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6. But if you see in this case, there are three teams B, C and D who are tied at same number of points, 1, 1, 1. In that case, we can use some tiebreaker to resolve this conflict. Now your tiebreaker might be depending on the type of sport you are playing. For instance, had it been a football tournament, then my tiebreaker could be goals for minus goals against. That is the goal difference. How many goals you have done against the opposition minus how many goals you have conceded it to your opposition. If it's cricket, it could be net run rate where the difference of the victory of one team matters. Similarly, other tie-breaking rules can be there depending on what kind of competition it is. But that is not important. What is important is that with the help of this tie-breaker, one of the teams will be placed above the others. As a result, if you see in this particular problem, it is possible for a team to have just one victory and still finish in top two because it has tied with the other teams and but by the help of that tiebreaker rule it might still get ahead of other two teams and hence finish in top two. So with this problem we see that it is possible for a team to have just one victory and still finish in top two. Let's see another extreme case for this. It goes like this same four teams A, B, C, D in league format. Again the same rule that top two qualify to the next round. But the case here this time is little different. Let's say D loses all its matches to A, B, C. So let's say D played 3, 1, 0, lost 3 and hence has 0 points. A wins against B and D but loses to C. So A has played 3, 1, 2 this time that is against B and D. Lost 1 and hence the points are 2. C wins against A and D. Since A lost to C, so C will anyways win against A. C will also win against D because I told you that D lost all its matches. So C has won two matches, but C loses to B. So hence, C also ends up having three matches, one, two, lost one and having two points instead. Now, B wins against C. This is clear because we have already illustrated that C loses to B and D because D has lost all its matches anyways but B loses to A that also we have made clear above itself A wins against B so for B also we have 3 played 2 won 1 lost and hence 2 points now once again we have a conflict here 3 teams having same number of points as a result of tiebreaker 2 of the teams will be ahead of 3rd team say A and B are ahead of C because of the tiebreaker rules of the tournament. Hence, it is possible that one team has got two points or two victories out of three and still it does not finish in top two. So hence with this four team format, I can clearly illustrate that in one case it is possible for a team to have just one victory and still finish in top two. On the other hand, it is possible for a team to have two victories and still not finish in top two so that is again something which is makes this problem strange now why these problems are so strange and what do we do to handle them comes here we have to understand the math behind this peculiarity so the math is pretty simple it goes like this we had four teams A, B, C and D. Therefore, number of matches is equal to, let's count them, A against B, A against C, A against D. So, 3 matches for A. Now, B against A, we have already counted when we said A against B. So, we will not count it again. One more match is B against C and B against D. That make it makes two more matches. 
now C's match against B and C's match against A I have already counted so C's match against D is the only one which is remaining so it is 3 plus 2 plus 1 equal to 6 matches now since there are number of matches is 6 which is constant another thing is that one particular team can win 3 matches maximum three matches can be won by a team while minimum a team can win is zero matches Now let's see the two cases. Case 1, what is the maximum number of wins a team can have and still not qualify? what is the maximum number of wins a team can have and still not qualify so for this let's see there are total six matches to be won or lost and what we are after is one two three four positions and we are after a team coming at position three and maximizing the number of wins so maximize wins for team three now if I want to maximize the wins of team placed at 3, I have to minimize the wins of other teams, that is teams placed above and below it. So now if I want to minimize the wins, one thing is that minimum number of wins a team can have is 0. So ideally I would like to keep them to 0. So say team 4 I keep to 0 but then there is a problem of uh, problem in giving 0 wins to team 1 and team 2 because in that case they will not stay ahead of team 3 so it's okay to give lesser wins to team below 3 whatever that least number is but there is a problem in giving lesser wins to teams above 3 because then they will not stay above 3 so what we do is that there are six wins the best way to keep them above three also and still give them minimum number of wins is divide the wins equally among the teams so there are six wins we divide them equally among three teams that is six by three equal to two so if i divide them equally i still have a case of keeping them above three and also minimize their wins as a result i have automatically maximize the wins of team at third place so this is the math which leads to me having maximum number of wins for a team and still not qualifying let me clean up this slide so that i can discuss further the other case before going further let me reiterate certain points which we established during the previous solution it goes like this there were six matches in all and maximum number of matches max matches a team can win is equal to three once again because there were four teams a b c and d so a team plays only three matches against other teams minimum matches a team can win is equal to zero so once i have reiterated these points let's come to the problem this time once again we will be looking at the four slots but this time we will be looking at minimum number of wins with which a team can finish in top two 
or in other words we are trying to minimize the points of team staying at second place so once again if i want to minimize the points here i need to maximize the points of other teams so when i'm trying to maximize the points this time i will consider the team above it why because if i have to keep a team above it i can give as many points as possible to the team above it now maximum number of wins a team can have is 3 so ideally i would like to give maximum wins to team above it on the other hand i want to give maximum number of wins to teams below it as well but at the same time also keep them below two so just like what we did in the previous iteration i will do the same thing i have number of matches remaining is 6 minus 3 equal to 3 because there are total 6 matches to be played i have already awarded 3 matches or 3 wins to this i have to distribute these results of these 3 matches among these 3 teams so the best way to do it is make all of them win one match that is divide the number of wins equally among the remaining teams as a result i have been able to minimize the points at second position so hence this is the math behind a team finishing in top 2 by the nature of having only won one match so if we understand this maths then we can solve any problem number of teams does not matter to us let's see how so this is the complete problem which is this and problems like this are uh, are regularly asked in different kinds of aptitude exams so the problem goes like this there are eight teams a b c d e f g h who participated in a soccer tournament and the rules were as follows so this time we have eight teams each team played each other exactly once in league stage so we have already established that seven matches per team there were no ties this is important the winner of the every match got two points so they are defining the point scheme clearly that the winner of every match is getting two points while loser got zero points the top four teams in terms of points in the league stage will advance to the semi finals so this time we have top four teams out of eight qualifying and if two teams have same number of points the team with better goal difference will be ranked higher so here is our tie breaker which i was talking about since it's a soccer tournament we are talking about goal difference and then there are bunch of questions which we have to solve so before coming to the questions let's do the basics right so the basics are there are eight teams so let's figure out the total number of matches first so in the as in the previous case we did 3 plus 2 plus 1 similar logic we will apply here also a b c d e f g and h so for a one match each against all other teams so it is like seven matches then for b against a we have already counted so i will not recount it but b against c b d b e b f b g and b h are six more matches similarly for c there are five more matches that is against d e f g and h for d there are four more matches because there three matches against abc have already been counted then for e th three more matches that is against fg and h for f two more matches and for g one more match now this sum 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 leads us to 28 matches in all now once we figure out the matches now second thing which is important is figuring out the number of points per match so we see that winner of every match got 2 points while loser got 
zero points. So total number of points at stake are twenty-eight. That is the number of matches into number of points per match. So total number of points which are at stake is fifty-six. Now same thing we can apply to number of points a team can have. Max points a team can have. Is equal to seven into two because maximum matches it can play is seven, and per match it can earn maximum of two points. So maximum points a team can have is fourteen, while minimum points team can have is equal to zero into two. That is zero only. So armed with this knowledge, let's try to solve the questions. First one is pretty straightforward. Find the total number of matches to be played in the tournament. So we have already figured out that twenty-eight matches in league stage. League stage. So four teams go, go into semi-finals. As a result, two semi-finals, and finally one final. So total number of matches is twenty-eight plus two plus one equal to thirty-one. That is total number of matches. Up next is find the minimum number of points with which a team can prosper to the semi-final. So as we saw, the top four teams have to qualify, and we have to find minimum number of points with which a team can qualify to the semi-finals. so basically we have to minimize the points of team staying at fourth position as a result we have to maximize the points above it and minimize the points and oh, sorry maximize the points below it also so maximize here maximize here this automatically gets minimized so first of all maximizing the points above it i see that there were total 56 points so if i want to maximize the points of the teams out here i would have to make sure that they win maximum number of matches for them to win maximum number of matches i would assume that they won all the matches against lower ranked teams so how many matches do they play against lower ranked teams lower ranked teams to uh, teams 1 to 3 are 4 5 6 7 and 8 so all of them say one against teams placed at 4 5 6 7 and 8 that is all of them one five matches each so this gives them 10 points each also they must have won and lost some matches when they played against each other because when they play against each other the points remain among them only So let's see. One, two, and three can play against each other in three ways. One plays against two. One plays against three, and two plays against three. So three matches means six points. So other than these ten points each, they have six more points. That makes it thirty-six points. are the maximum number of points which can be distributed among top 3 now remaining points is 56 minus 36 equal to 20 now these 20 points i have to distribute among teams ranked from 4 to 8 and such that the points of teams ranked 5th 6th 7th and 8th are maximum because i have to maximize here but on one hand i have to maximize their points and at the same time i have to keep their points same as team ranked 4th 
so what i will do is i will take these 20 points and divide them equally same thing which i did earlier divide them equally that is four points to each of the teams that way i have managed to give them maximum number of points and still keep it below the team rank four due to the some tiebreaker rules so as a result the minimum number of points with which a team can prosper to the semi-final is four which is same as saying that even with two wins team can prosper to the semi-finals same thing which i illustrated at the start of this lecture let's move to the last question find the maximum number of points which a team can have and still not make it to the semi-finals so this time we are trying to maximize the points of team at place 5 that a team placed at 5 got maximum possible points and still not made it to the semi-final so once again I have to minimize other points so when I have to minimize first I look at teams below so when I look at teams below if I want to minimize the points of 6, 7 and 8 I would like them to lose all matches so ideally I would like to give them 0 points each but then this is not possible because they play against each other as well that is 6 plays against 7, 6 plays against 8 and 7 plays against 8 so when they play against each other the points distributed will remain among them only so when 6 plays against 7, 6 plays against 8 and 7 plays against 8 there are 3 matches or 6 points which they will have among each other so the minimum points which I can give them is 6 points as a result remaining points is 56 minus 6 equal to 50 points now if I have to distribute these 50 points such that the team points of a team placed at top 4 are minimum and still they stay ahead of team 5 I will distribute them equally that is 50 points will be divided among 5 teams equally so 50 by 5 is equal to 10 so if I give 10 points to each of them then I have managed to make a team ranked 5th win 5 matches or score 10 points and still keep them below the team ranked top 4 so this is my other extreme case which I spoke about at the start of this lecture that is it is possible for a team to have 10 points or 5 wins and still not make it to the semi finals so this concludes this so before I wind up this video a couple of things one is the practice resources for this topic you can go to this following link and download the doc which contains practice problems try out the first set of problems in the doc because that problem is pertaining to the logic which we learned today that is one thing also this link can be found in the description of this video next thing I would like to do is point to give you some idea about the next lecture so let's look at the following sample problem which goes like this that in a European league four football teams are going to play against each other once after some matches have been played a table was being made to display the result of those matches this is the table however much of the information in the table was accidentally erased as shown below it is known that the teams are awarded two points for a win one for a draw and zero for the loss now if you look carefully at the table we are just not keeping the track of played, won, drawn, lost and points but also goals for and goals against in this if you look at the questions also they are something like this where they ask what was the score of the match between AC Milan and Arsenal what was the score of the match between Arsenal and Man U and what was the score of the match between Chelsea and AC Milan so here they have directly spoken about the scores of the match so point distribution which we were practicing in this current video will not do the trick for us instead we will have to get into details of each and every match
so how to go about solving problems like these we will discuss in our next video till then goodbye see you